Welcome to the Walk Show Podcast. This is your host, Walker Near. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. I actually have my friend Crystal Hagee stop by and we talk quite a bit about dogs and just different experiences we've had. We had a lot of fun recording it. I hope you guys have a lot of fun listening. Thanks again for checking us out. This episode was produced, original music and artwork by Misha Zarens. Welcome to the Walk Show Podcast. I'm your host, Walker Near. Uh, today, I'm joined by my dear friend, Crystal Hagee, and we're just going to talk about different dogs that we've known, actually, throughout our lives. A lot of dogs. Yeah. We love dogs a lot. Dogs. Uh, I personally subscribe to probably 20 different dog Instagram feeds <laughs> um, and frequently screenshot those posts and have just entire google drive filled with dogs that i've never met pictures but they are adorable so you gotta save them um but yeah so i was thinking back like trying to think of my earliest memories of dogs and the first dogs that i ever remember was when i was a little bitty kid like i, I mean before i was in school or anything and it was these neighbors had these dogs that lived on you know and obviously in, in their house on the other side of the, this chain link fence though and so I would go over and lay next to the fence and then just put my hand through it and then I could pet the dogs. And that's probably the first memory of dogs that I have, which doesn't end great because I eventually tried to climb over the fence to get to the dogs, but it's a chain link fence with the spikes on top mm -hmm. and, and I didn't know how to climb a fence. So then I perforated. tried to roll and it just, I just got stuck. Yeah. Um, not a serious injury. Luckily I don't have like a giant <laughs> scar or anything, but um yeah not a great look <laughs> yeah it could have been worse the dog could have it, yeah the dogs yeah. were very sweet they didn't attack me yeah. yeah no it was all nice it was a collie like a lassie oh yeah mm -hmm. they're real smart mm -hmm. what was the first dog that you you can remember do you have an early dog memory super sad oh story <laughs> um i love dogs my entire life at that time i was like four years old it was a hefty it was a good four years yeah. that i just like was obsessed with dogs mm -hmm. uh the dog fancy like all of the like magazines uh i would go to the library with my grandma and would just like love the dog books made her read me old yeller bad bad idea <laughs> um so i had begged my mom for a dog forever and she kept being like, no, no, like we can't afford it. There's not, you know, someone here to take care of it. You're not going to take care of it. And then um, whenever I was six years old, she started selling cameo lingerie. Okay. Do you know what that is? I do not know. It's like the Avon of like lingerie. Okay. It's like a multi-level marketing okay. thing, but with lingerie. Got ya. And um, so she had gotten like a small excess of money. Right. And she called my grandma who was watching me and was like, I have a huge present for Crystal. She's going to be really excited. And my grandma was like, oh, well, I'll tell her all about it. It'll, It's going to make her her day. And uh, so she told me, like, your mom is bringing home a dog for you. And I was like, ah! Right. Um, right. My mom got home, did the whole spiel, like, came in the door and was like, how are you? I have a present for you. It's going to be amazing. You're going to love it. It's everything that you want. And I was like, it's a fucking dog. Right. It's a dog. Right. Uh, that bitch goes out to the car. The dog? No. No. Your mother. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she <laughs> opens up the trunk and pulls out this little, do you know what a Sandy Cast dog is? Uh. It's like a little, look it up. Okay. It's a. Uh, Jamie, look it up. Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we watch Joe Rogan. <laughs> <sighs> So it's a little statue of a dog. And I don't even know. I think it was possibly like a, a Rottweiler or something. I see. Yeah. So she pulls this out like out of – she like puts it in her sweater and like opens it up and shows wow. it to me like it's a real dog. And wow. she thought that that was supposed to make me like – Elated. Fucking love her. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. It didn't though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually had a similar experience growing up. Now I – I did eventually get dogs a few different times, but um, my mom did the same thing. And it, I don't know that it was quite the level of elaboration, but like Christmas morning, 
get up. I got you a dog for Christmas. Come see it. Like, oh my God. And you I'm saw so that like in Lady and the Tramp too. And you're like, yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, I go out there and then I didn't get the Sandy Cast though. I got a little plastic thing from like a flea market. Mm. Like, it's not even, it's not well designed. I should well feel made. lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hashtag privilege. That's entitlement. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know why I love dogs so much. I don't know if it's, the, I guess it's the innocence. It's the pure heart. It's the naivety of it all. Like, I think we both have it because we both are obsessed with the Instagram. But the thing and... is, is, I'm not super into little kids and... They don't have the pure heart. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they're so selfish and they're just, you know, oh. they're new humans. Right. They still have like human stuff that they deal with, but they like right. don't know how to. And dogs don't have that. They're just pack animals that. Because yeah, other people have said to me, they're like, you're not, you don't like to play with kids, but you like to play with dogs. Like that's yeah. surprising. And it's like, I don't know. It, beyond the actual motivation of the child, it's also that like a little, those little wrinkly paws that dogs have or those little white chests. Like the smell, the paw smell. The baby's just a baby. Like, yeah. Eh, it's a fleshy, know. sticky mound. No offense to those of you with babies, but. Yeah, you know. Anyway, um, so the yeah, the first dog memory is the ones over the fence, and then after that, uh, my dad, when I was probably like six or seven, was like, "We're gonna get a dog," and I was like, "Sweet." So my aunt, <laughs> I've been duped. <laughs> yeah. So my well, we did get a dog. Um, so my aunt raised red tick coonhounds, mm. and so we went to look at them, and then my dad picked one, and we brought him home, and so he let me name him, and I named him. Woody after Woody the Woodpecker. Um, didn't understand the innuendo in that name for some years, you know. But anyway, um, Woody was his, I mean, he's a hound dog, so he's super cute. He's got the giant floppy ears and, you know, he's very soft. The morose and, face. Yeah. And he's, yeah. you know, and he's he was a sweet, sweet enough dog, but... He wasn't re I thought he was going to be my dog, but he was really my dad's dog. And he yeah. really was never that into me. Um, I remember one time when I was pretty young and he was still a puppy, so he didn't like hurt me at all, but I tried to cuddle with him and it was, it was yeah. one too many cuddles. And so there was a snapping incident. And mm -hmm. I was frightened. Um, and yeah, we just never really got along. I mean, I can't say we didn't get along. It's not like, again, it's not like he attacked me or anything and you know, whatever, but like I could call him and be like, you know, calling him over to me and he would come to me and then divert at the last second and go to anybody else. Like he was always <laughs> punking me like that, you know? Yeah. And one time I remember I called him over and he actually came to me and I was like, Oh my God, it's we happening. made up. Like, yeah. Like hashtag breakthrough. Here we are. <laughs> and then, uh, he got over to me and I was like, how are you boy? And I petted his head once and then he vomited right on my way. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, out and out vomited on him and then walked back away. He wasn't interested in, in my affection. Um, and yeah, that that's probably the best summary of my relationship with Woody is didn't really care for me and liked to vomit on me. Yeah. Retribution. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Other than that, I had a couple of other dogs that my mom got me that were only for, I, I mean, we had them for less than a year. One of them we took to my uncle who, did legitimately live on a farm and I did go there to take Blossom to the it farm. Out. Mm -hmm. However, upon returning to the farm later, Blossom was named the dog. Uh, she was not available for me. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It was clean. The farm she had away. firearms, I assume. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. She was named after the 90s sitcom. I assumed. Yeah. The hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. The Joey reference. Um, <laughs> is that his name? It was Joey. He was yeah. Joey before Friends Joey. Yes. Huh. Anyway. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's weird. Like, I don't just, like, I, as much as I love dogs in real life, too, like, and I, I'm not, you know, clearly not alone in this, but like, I even like video game dogs. God, the Red Dead dogs. Yeah. Or like, mm. like the Fallout dogs. Or yeah. Yeah. I, there was a game in, in like around 2000 that played kind of like a GTA style game or actually it played more like Max Payne, but you played as the dude. It was kind of like a Turner and Hooch, except way darker and without Tom <laughs> Hanks, like Turner and Hooch blended with Taken. Like imagine that, right? That's okay. the video game premise. <laughs> anyway, there's not really sex trafficking in it, I guess, but anyway, so, um, <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, and you could switch between like the main dude that you were, there was like a cop or whatever, and then the dog, and he would do like stealth parts of the game as the dog or whatever. That was pretty dope. I don't know. God, I forgot about that part in GTA. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. You do that in GTA yep. also with the Rottweiler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the Rottweiler in GTA five was was cool, but it kind of disappointed me because in order to do a lot of the functions with it, you had to download the GTA five companion app. Mm. And that was before I had a smartphone. Yeah, I didn't do that. So yeah, neither did I. So then you don't get a like train him and you couldn't Yeah, I just thought so. it was a cool little feature. I didn't realize it could be flexed out. And, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could you could throw him a ball and stuff and improve his stats or whatever. Huh. Yeah. That's all it takes, huh? That's all it takes. <laughs> throw the ball more. Um so you said that your mom brought you so when did you actually get your first dog then? If you all got right. the statue dog. Got the statue dog. She's right. still with us. <laughs> um she has That's dust the benefit. Accumulated. She never had to go through the heartbreak of That was how she sold statue. it to me too. Nice. She was like, You don't have to feed it. You don't have to walk it. All the responsibilities. Um so there was this dog outside of um, my stepdad was like a diesel mechanic and we lived in Utah at the time. And uh, there was this dog who was like spotted. It was like a blue tick something. I don't It was just kind of a mutt, yeah. but it had like, you know, black spots all over it. And uh, I would go there after school. Like he would pick me up and take me back to a shop and then hang out for like an hour while he got off work and then we would go back home. Uh, well, also during that time, I was watching a lot of Animal Planet and uh, MTV2. Oh, right. So Animal Planet had this like interview with a dog masseuse. Mm -hmm. And uh, he like one morning, I just watched the shit out of it. And he like walked you through like how to massage yeah. an animal. And uh, you start at the back, and you like work your way down, and you do like the flank, the sides, and then you do like the leg, and then you like work the top of the tail, not the bottom, because of territorial stuff. Um, <laughs> and uh, so the next time that my stepdad picked me up from school and brought me to his shop, uh, I massaged this dog. I see. And after that, he like fucking loved me. <laughs> Like, he followed me around everywhere. All the, like, mechanic dudes were like, I don't know what it is. You just loved your little girl. Right. And uh, that was what I would say was my first dog. Yeah. Just because, like, I had the experience of, like, I walked him around. I fed him. Mm -hmm. I, like, watered him. Um, I massaged him. Yeah. Multiple times a day. That's, I mean, that's pretty much owning a dog. Yeah. Right there. So, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but I only had him for, like, two hours. Right. But, but for, now, did you get a, did you have access to him for, like... Uh, cumulatively, I would have had him for like a week and a half, maybe. So, <laughs> in dog years, in dog longer. years, I made Seven a huge weeks. difference. So, yeah, <laughs> nice, huh? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really remember. I don't know that I had an experience like that ever. Really, I mean, you know, the neighbor's dog when I was a little bitty kid, obviously, and then my dad's dog wasn't really mine, I guess. But I don't know that I really have had. A relationship with a dog like that that wasn't mine at least until i was an adult like as a mm -hmm. kid i never really i never really had that the next dog that i got when i was a kid was um it was really my like i said my mom got a couple other dogs but they ran away or were given away or whatever pretty quickly shot on the farm yeah <laughs> you added to the burn pile wow um <laughs> yeah that's probably accurate. yeah yeah <laughs> it's the midwest um so the next dog that I got, I was in eighth grade, I think, and he was a, a husky chow mix, and he had blue eyes and the blue tongue like chows have, and he had a blue streak of fur. I mean, I say blue, I guess it would probably, I don't know, it wasn't like punk rock hair blue. But yeah. It was, you know, kind of like a blue tick. It's saturated. Dog. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so being the creative person that I am, I named him Blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure it's a very popular dog name. Blue's Clues. <laughs> Didn't actually watch that. It was, it, was, it was after my time. I was a little mature for Blue's Clues. I had that too, yeah. <laughs> Sesame Street, sure. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, Blue was, was awesome. Like, he, I mean, all throughout high school, that's how my mom would wake me up. She would just open the door and tell Blue to, to get his boy, and then he would run and jump on the bed and cuddle or whatever and wake me up. And, yeah, he was he was awesome. I, I remember one time. Was this after... Your mom and dad were like... Oh, yeah, yeah. My okay. mom and dad split up when I was like eight. And so he had like no chance to bond with your dad at all. Well, you so yes, because they didn't live together. However, I went to my dad's pretty much every weekend. And my mom and dad, even though they divorced, 
I mean, they didn't hang out, but they were always on good terms. I mean, it was there was never a awesome. long lasting animosity, right. and fights and stuff, but it was nothing ever serious. And so, actually, my dad was just like a dog whisperer because I remember I'd had blue for I don't know a month or something. I don't know how long, a while, and like we're bonded. And then my dad showed up, and yeah, you would have thought that. He was with him the whole time. Mm -hmm. like, and so Blue would come and stay with me on the weekends at my dad sometimes. Uh, I'd hang out with Woody or whatever. Um, and yeah, so he and my dad actually did get along pretty well, which was cool. Yeah. Woody and him had a very weird relationship. We watched a lot of Oz back then, which is a print oh, series from HBO. <laughs> and I think it rubbed off, no pun intended, but kind of, uh -huh. on them because Woody would frequently try and sexually assault Blue. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, I don't even want to get You can't let your dogs of, sit that close to the TV. Yeah. All I can say is that when I hear ASMR videos now, uh -huh. it brings up certain memories <laughs> that I would rather not remember. About You've the repressed dog's them for a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, Blue was great. Um, I had him for, for several years and I, I miss him quite a bit. He was he was my first, like, really my only dog that was really my dog through and through. Like, yeah. since then, I've had other dogs that I've, you know, been cool with or whatever or been close with, but they weren't my dog. They right. Were, like, I was their person kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, but so fast forward to adult life and you have a no-kill shelter at your home now. Not literally. Ideally. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will not kill them. Yeah, well, that's... <laughs> There have been some accidents. Sure. But we think it's old age. <laughs> um, yeah. I uh, I have Bean and Ripley. Yeah. Bean is a giant mountain dog. I have met Bean. Bean is... I mean, I've met Ripley also. Both adorable. Bean, though, I've never seen a dog that looks like Bean. She's gorgeous, isn't she? She is. And she's, so she's huge, she, first off. Yeah. And she's very pretty. And she's, like, so, like like cautiously sweet and playful she's for lack really of a better smart. explanation yeah like like yeah always super pleasant and fun and everything but like not she's not just like charging people and knocking them over. oh yeah like she's not she doesn't have that the the dog thing the, she doesn't have that yeah if you will i've she never won't seen her me. act like that mm -mm. yeah no she's composed at all times and what kind of dog is Ripley? Ripley is, I don't know what he is. I think he's like an Australian Shepherd Beagle type uh -huh. thing. He's got the like, he's definitely, I don't know, he points. So he's okay. kind of like a bird dog as well. Right. I don't really know. Uh, yeah. He looks like a little piglet though. <laughs> a little pot-bellied pig. <laughs> so my mom has a Beagle Trooper, which I'll talk about more in a bit. However, last night my mom called me to ask me if I thought Trooper was getting fat. And you're like, yeah. Yeah. Well, getting isn't really a first because <laughs> he's just been fat for some time. Now, I don't know that he's getting any fatter, uh -huh. but Trooper is a tiny dog. I mean, he at, at thin, he weighs 20 pounds. Yeah. So I think he weighs close to 30 now. That's a 50% increase in weight. <laughs> like, that's huge. If you weighed 100 pounds and tomorrow you weighed 150, that's crazy. Something excessive happened. Right. Well, yeah. for Trooper, it's a, she feeds him three times a day. And there's treats, mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's so cute. It's a, he's a it's sleeper so too. Hard. Yeah, he is a sleeper. Yeah, he is a sleeper. Takes his naps. <laughs> um, so you have Ripley, you have Bean. I thought there was a third, a Fritz. Fritz is with my mom now. Okay, okay. And he actually went through some trauma a oh. couple months ago. Oh. Um, he came and stayed with me because we I live in the woods now. And so it's like an optimal place for dogs. They can like come out and run and everything. Um, I gave him a bath because he smelled like cigarette smoke. <laughs> can see those with my mom now. Right. And uh, I got him out of the shower. was like drying him off. And he was like so excited to get down. And I was trying to clip his toenails because I would just try to do like all maintenance right. all at one time. And uh, he just like fucking jumped down oh. and uh, into the into the floor and he busted his front teeth out. Oh, my God. Just busted them out. Oh, my God. So I immediately took him to the vet. There was a, a giant vet bill because <laughs> he had to be put under because they had to pull those teeth out. 
Um, it turns out he actually had really bad teeth anyway, which I knew his gums were bad. Um, I'm making a horrified face right now. Just exasperated. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> um, a couple of teeth in the back also got removed. Uh-huh. And so it was kind of a blessing, I guess. Okay. That's what the vet told me as they were billing me, of yeah, course. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, he knocked out a, a good portion of his teeth. So uh, That's horrible. It is horrible. But I guess it's better now. It is better now. Um, it was right after alone. Puffy, our our cat, had died. Oh, right. And uh, it was funny because whenever I brought – so I brought Fritz in. He had a surgery. We were like, oh, my God, so much money. And then um, picked him up, got him in the car. We were, like, headed home. And uh, Chris was going through, uh, like, grieving stuff because his stepmom, you know, okay. passed away very – you know, suddenly. Um, so he's been like mulling over like, what is a soul? What happens sure. in, like in the afterlife? Yeah. And uh, he was holding Fritz and Fritz was just like staring at him like with that glossy dog stare, mm-hmm. you know, like they, they want something. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just like broke him. And he was Googling if animals have souls, like what proof that animals have souls. Mm-hmm. And he found so many videos of like animals like returning to their owners, animals like, you know, saving their owners that had collapsed, like just all these like, you know, heartwarming, of mm-hmm. course, animals have souls. Right. Things. But it was it was really sweet because he got to have that yeah. with a dog that had no front <laughs> teeth. <laughs> yeah. Tongue lolled out. Right. Like a frog. <laughs> Huh. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing about dogs. That's so crazy is like you, you, you know, obviously they don't speak or anything. And so the communication with them is so limited and they really can only interact with anything with their mouth. Mm -hmm. Like they don't have hands or anything. They do have hands. Well, there's no thumb. How about that? (laughs) So, so yeah, but, but it's crazy how much, um, emotion and the range of emotions, I guess you can experience with a dog. Yeah. That, I, the dog is doing very little, uh, at least, you know, uh, it's see like it would appear that very little is going on, but in the moment it's, it's overwhelming enough to, <laughs> to cry. Right. Like, yeah. Shed a tear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, so another dog that I, um, had a really good relationship with is a, a close friend of mine had this basset hound named molasses. Which is the God, perfect molasses. name for the a folds? Hound. Yes, yeah, the folds. Yeah, and and molasses was w- lived up to that name. Mm-hmm. You know, very on her own time, diva. Mm-hmm. You know? A puddle. Yeah, if you just let her warm. Correct. Um, also dominant, however, lived with a, they, she lived with another female dog. Both females still would mount and hump the other dog, which I always thought was just like a... You gotta do it sometimes. A male thing when they weren't neutered yet, but no, it's just purely a dominance thing, which is kind of weird. Our bunny did that to our female bunny. Really? She'd hump our cats. Huh. Yeah. And the cats took that. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. sure. <laughs> <laughs> if she pinned them in a the corner, they did. Yeah. But yeah, dude, molasses was great. Like, I would, we, I used to hang out these friends used to live here in Springfield. And, and so I would go hang out there almost every weekend. And yeah, molasses was like super bossy. Like she would like try and push you around with her little wrinkly, heavy paws, and mm-hmm. direct you places and have you leave the chair that she wanted and things like the that. Shot and yeah. And then when I would, sometimes I would crash over there and then I would get to, to cuddle with molasses at night. And that was pretty, pretty great. Those ears, you can just, Molasses, sadly, is no longer with us. However, those friends did get another basset hound named Hazelnut. Uh, and I got to go with them to when they picked up Hazelnut as a puppy. <laughs> so I actually got to go to a place where there were like eight basset hound puppies. God, just all tripping little, on their ears. Yes, they can't <laughs> not step on their ear. And they all just want to be petted. And mm-hmm. I only have the two hands. <laughs> only so much time. <laughs> the one face. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, man, molasses was great. Hazelnut Hazelnut is cool too. I just haven't been around Hazelnut nearly as much because they live up in Kansas City now. Well, are you the godfather then? I think on the certificate on the paperwork. Okay. I am. The adoption. Yeah. <laughs> Legally, we'll yes. say. You know, yeah. I don't know I don't know what other people have in their heads running around, <laughs> you know, but legally it's definitely uh-huh. me. yeah. And uh, and in the will, whatever okay. hazelnut leaves behind, I get a percentage yep. of. Yeah, yeah. 
And she's got quite a portfolio. <laughs> Already. Yeah. She's a stunner. Yeah, she invests in nothing. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not why not. <laughs> yeah, she's not uh, that's step one is budgeting and, and I can't convince Hazel that. So <laughs> here we are. Um but yeah, so then the, the 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 next dog and now the dog that I currently am accessing, if you will, is my mom's dog Trooper, that's the beagle I talked about. So he was one of my one of my best friends found Trooper um, out in his yard, and it was one of his neighbor's dogs. So my friend took Trooper back to the neighbor and said, "Hey, I think your dog got out." And the neighbor was this like methed out lady that didn't look well at all. To her credit, she actually said to my friend, "I don't think I can take care of the dog. Do you think you can take him?" Which is a pretty audacious thing to ask someone that you've never seen, but. Good on her for not, you know. Cut her at a good time. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we, so, so, so he, he took the dog and adopted him. Didn't name him though, because he didn't actually want to, to have a dog, but he couldn't leave him with his lady. That's so him too. I know. <laughs> so then, um, so then my mom was kind of wanting a dog. And, and so my buddy was like, well, this beagle that I have is the cuddliest dog that I've ever <laughs> been around. So you should give him a shot. So. We took him over there and he ran away the first night and then was rescued by a Green County Sheriff's deputy. But for whatever reason, that trooper, equal, trooper, right? So <laughs> he got named Trooper because he was saved by a trooper, even though it's not entirely accurate, but whatever. Um, and yeah, he, so he's been around now for with us, for, well, lives with my mom for four or five years. And yeah, he's, he's so adorable. He is so cute like i was just there yesterday and i said to him i said i don't know what to do with this cuteness i don't know what to <laughs> sit say. down yeah i don't know what to do with my hands you know <laughs> i don't know i don't know what i'm supposed to do with this level of adorable but he's, he doesn't really he doesn't he hardly ever barks he like when he wants something like if he wants to go if he wants food he doesn't go to his dish and bark he just comes over to you and wants attention. That's what Bean does. But won't get on your lap or anything. Yeah. Like won't commit to getting the attention. It's just like mm -hmm. pet me and then goes away. And then it's like pet me and then goes away. Yeah. Turns out that's a ritual for food or going outside or whatever else you might want. But yeah, he's he's also kind of a little bit of a jerk because he runs away as often as he can. I guess that's a thing <laughs> they say. But he um We've found him. We've gone over to other people's homes, like in the neighborhood that, you know, they've got a hold of him and let, her, let us know they had him. So we went over there to pick him up. Yeah, you walk in the front door and he's just on the couch. He's just <laughs> barely lifts his head up to look. Like, in fact, it makes us look like we might be dog kidnappers because he doesn't like, he's not like a lady. He's already he established. Yeah. He's just ready to move on at all times. He's mm -hmm. good. He is good. He has no roots. You need to get a dog. Yeah. Clearly, and introduce and get this <laughs> phenomenal characteristic set. Yeah. I, yeah, I know. It's a, it's a lot of responsibility. And I'm a very, uh, despite being 35, I live like I'm 20. Yeah. So. I you did know. just seal up the windows. I did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm a homeowner. So <laughs> that's a big boy thing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's something I think about quite a bit. I face an enormous amount of pressure anytime I talk about dogs, anytime I'm around dogs, because why would I not have a dog? But I don't know. It's just the the ability to like be gone and not think about it. You yeah. Know what I mean? It is a lot too, because you have to, you don't realize how much of your morning it really takes. Yeah. And then also your afternoon, if you forget to do something for them before you go to bed, that has to be taken care of. Right. Not saying that, you know, child raising isn't hard, but dog raising <laughs> well, is sure. also hard. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's a, it's just, it's more of a commitment than only taking care of yourself. Right? Yes. And like yep. when I dog sat for, so I've dog sat for my mom before and stayed over at her house when she's out of town with Trooper. And I mean, like I said, he is probably the easiest dog you could hope to have, but you know, like you can't leave him out in the house if you leave because he'll get into stuff, right? So we have to put him in a crate. Now the crate is like eight times his size and filled with blankets <laughs> and pillows. So it's very kind. It's, it's not even like, it's just like a, like a grid of metal bars. Yeah. So it's not, it's not even, I mean, he can see well, it's well lit, you know, so it's not like a little cave or something they actually do like caves though oh yeah. well whatever 
My point is, it's not like a little dungeon. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It, it seems like it would be comfortable. And he does in that what he does if he's not in that, which is lay on pillows and blankets and sleep. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the problem is. But he doesn't like it, of course. And I don't feel good about leaving him in there for a long time. But, like, when I dog sat, like, I would go to work. And then, and I remember when you and I used to work together, like, you got to go home on lunch and let him out. Because, yep. You know, and then when you get off work, if you want to go do something cool... Except you still have to go home first. And yeah, let him out. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's just constantly you have to just check in at home <laughs> very yeah. often. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. Just haven't been ready yet to forfeit those uh, conveniences. I guess. I bet one of these days a fantastic dog is just going to show up on your doorstep, and you're going to be like, you know what? I am ready. Yeah. <laughs> Well, last I year, I don't know about. if you remember, I think I told you about it, but last year I came home one day and there was a dog here. I don't think you did. Named I would have adopted it. <laughs> and it might have been named, It might. I think her name was, was like Lulu or something like that. <gasps> I vaguely remember this, yeah. I don't think it was Luna. I think it was like Lulu, but yeah. something similar to that. And it was this black lab and yeah, she was super adorable, but clearly someone else's dog. Yeah. And I put her in the backyard and called and she had a tag. So I called the people and said, Hey, yeah, she's here. But I had to go back to work because I was home on lunch. And then she, when I got back, she was gone. She, one of the, my fence, I have like a part of it. that's like a picket fence and one of the pickets was loose and she just pushed on that and it came yeah. off. Unfortunately, I did not become the owner of that dog. She uh, had an owner. Did you ever see? We talked about the game thing, but uh, so did you ever see like uh, like all dogs go to heaven? You mentioned Lady in the Tramp, Homeward Bound. Like, are these in your wheelhouse? Um, <laughs> yes, okay. yeah, I loved all. <laughs> Just I all love all them. animals. Yeah. yeah, I I love Lady in the Tramp quite a bit. I watched the, that movie a lot as a kid. Uh huh. And then All Dogs Go to Heaven. I remember watching a little bit, but I didn't watch it again as I got older. Like, I just watched it. I guess when it came out, I don't know if that's accurate, but yeah. close to then. Charlie. And then, yes. And then Homeward Bound, I remember seeing in the theater, but I don't really remember seeing it again after that. Homeward Bound. So I never went to the theater as okay. a kid. So I can't, I don't know like when we got the VHS and all that <laughs> stuff, but I know that I watched it all the time whenever I was little and yeah. like still developing. And uh, it made me so anxious. Really? Yeah, I didn't know if they would get home. Like every time, I was just like sucked into <laughs> Not understanding it. Understanding that this I was like, is they a... could get hurt if they get hurt. What happens? How are they getting food? Like, there's a cat out there. She's beautiful. Right. Let's... <laughs> oh, thank God they had each other, though. Are you? So are you? Just so you're kind of you're a cat person too. I mean, you mentioned Puffy earlier, and you have. I've always been a dog person, yeah. but I've had more cats than dogs. Yeah, surprisingly. I, so I have friends that have cats that insist that I should get a cat because it alleviates most of the concerns I have about dog ownership where you can leave the cat mm -hmm. at home and you can be gone for a while and it will yeah. ration its food out and it's, you know, higher functioning in some yeah. ways than the dog. But I've never, I've never had a cat that I can like, that I feel confident about my ability to like pick up and like scratch its chest as vigorously as I want and then put it back down. And it won't like, claw me to death. Yeah. Or attack. Puffy was good with you, wasn't he? I, I, I mean, I don't remember anything negative with Puffy, but I don't think I was like, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't troopering. Puffy, yeah. If we will. Well, the dogs were just like on top of you. At that <laughs> right. Point too, so, yeah. <laughs> Puffy was like the closest that I have ever gotten to a dog like cat. Like he would play fetch and like he just laid around all the time. Um, he just loved like horse playing with the dogs, a dog playing, if you will. <laughs> and uh, he was just will. a pig. He, yeah. you know, like loved food and. Right. Yeah, I had a friend that had a cat. She said that it was so fat one at one point that it, it would just lay down next to its food dish, and then just like roll up and eat food, and then just lay back down, and then that it just it was there Dude, until that was they puffy. took the food dish away. And then Chris's cat marbles. Oh. The, the same exact same way. Yeah. Yeah, my mom has a cat named Festus. So Trooper looks just like Odie, and Festus looks just <laughs> like Garfield. It. It's crazy. <laughs> and, and, and it's similar because Festus is far smarter than Trooper. Of course. And Trooper is that, like, like dumb, happy-go-lucky, 
enthusiastic for no reason personality just like Odie. It's great. It's it, it it's very good. But Festus, like Festus, I can pet, but it's the same thing. Like I've been petting him, and then it's like, and now claws, and I don't mm-hmm. want that. So. See, I don't think that you'll get – what you love about dogs is the, like, stare. Yeah. The, like, they're looking at you. They're, like, fully engaged. Their, yeah. like, brain is all lit up on an MRI. Um, you're not going to get that with a cat at all. No. Well, a cat's, like, a feral, like, like partially feral creature still. It's yeah. not – it's not about me. It's about Have you it. seen the – like videos of the you know like seals and dogs are related i right? did not know that actually. oh my gosh this so explains the barking yeah <laughs> <laughs> um like Woody walruses like um yeah. really yeah did he also like bounce around no but there, i mean the boing boings you know really low uh-huh yeah um so seals walruses um Sea lions, I feel like they're one of them as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they all have like a common ancestor oh. who like, you know, evolutionarily we came out of the water and right. then we had like land creatures and this was a land creature and then seals, walruses, whatever. I forget. It's like, it starts with a P is their like mm-hmm. family. They went back into the water and uh. they have like webbed feet and stuff and dogs, some dogs have webbed feet as well, uh. but like that's where they split off like uh. several million years ago. Uh, or within 6,000. But if you see like a seal and a dog playing together, it's like the sweetest thing. Huh. Yeah, that would be great. Because they both have that like, I don't know. That I've look. never, I've, I mean, I've seen obviously on the internet and stuff seals, but I've never been to like, I've never, I mean, I've only been to the ocean once and I certainly wasn't in an area where that is no. horrible. There was trash. And, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then I've never been to like a sea world or anything like that. Yeah. Where they have animals like that. Have you ever seen a seal live in person? Uh, I have because I went to Hawaii. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, right. For work or whatever. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty dope. But you were talking about uh, Bean and Ripley earlier. So how did you get Bean and Ripley? How did you? Funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually got Ripley for my birthday. Oh. Um, I had like went around and like looked at uh, several humane societies like around my my like home my home area Mm -hmm. and uh all of the puppies were sick so i ended up having to drive like an hour just to look at puppies wow to find ripley and i wanted to get a puppy because i had puffy at the time and i didn't want you know the dog to whatever right um ripley was just the sweetest thing uh he was the only puppy there that wasn't covered in his own piss So he was super sweet. Yeah. So that was a real selling point. Yeah. You there was like a long haired one and a short haired one. And I took them outside and the long haired one just like fucking ran off. And Ripley <laughs> just sat on my foot. And I was like, this is my boy. Yeah. <laughs> this is him. So got him home. Um, and then a friend uh, actually found Bean and her siblings. There were seven puppies in a box in the middle of a field and it was completely duct taped shut. It was horrifying. Um, so that's how I got her. And that's crazy. That may be her problem. Why she's cautious. Yeah. But I don't think it's a problem. It's, 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 she's, she's very pleasant. She is. Whereas like, I have another friend who has a puppy that's about six months old and he doesn't know how to stop. So like, if you're like, Hey, come here and he runs to you. He does not understand breaking, so he really? just slams into your legs pretty – I mean, it's not fair to say it's full speed, but mm-hmm. pretty close. Like, I feel like that's puppy stuff, though. <laughs> yeah, that could be. Have, yeah. <laughs> but it's just like, I don't know. I mean, you could figure out how to slow down. Yeah. You know, maybe. Bean was always very cautious, and she always uh, will do the – which I only know this from Cesar Milan, but uh, <laughs> she'll always roll on her back. And like show her belly, and that's her being like, "Hey, right. you can totally alpha me." It's cool. <laughs> so it's appreciated. But have you seen Diesel recently? No, I haven't. See, that's a puppy I'd like in my life all the time. Yeah, that dog was amazing. Diesel's a pit bull that we both know through mutual friend. It's his dog, and yeah. So I never. The only pit bulls I had been around were like I. The first house I lived in after I graduated high school was. We had neighbors that had a pit bull that they kept out in the backyard on a chain. And if you went mm. outside, it would lunge and growl and bark. And it seemed like the yeah. chain was not going to hold. And the fence between the yards was chicken wire. So oh. not a lot of confidence. 
Uh, the dog did get loose a few times, and like when we were out on the porch and it would come up and sniff, it never attacked anyone or anything. But I definitely had the kind of stereotypical impression of pit bulls, where it's like, eh, it's kind of a dog. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not that I thought they should all be killed or banned, but just like I'm going to be really cautious around that yeah. kind of dog. And then Diesel was introduced. And then I came to learn that the pit bulls are actually just like literally every other dog. Super sweet and nice. Mm -hmm. There is no thing. If the dog's an asshole, it's because its owner's an asshole. They smile too. Yes, they it do. It kills me. Yes. Yeah, Diesel's level of happiness is just unmatched. Yeah. I never really knew... And he's like a modest happy as well. <laughs> he's not like jumping on you all the time. No, and... he isn't. He and he's he has such weird habits. Like, like in order to go to sleep, he has to grab a pillow God, and I then suck on the that. corner of it. I didn't know that dogs could do a sucking Had PTSD. activity. Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't know. You know, like when they drink, they just ladle it with the tongue, right? Yeah. It's not like a straw or something. I didn't even know they knew how to do that, but he did. Mm -hmm. Ripley will do that to various stuffed animals that we have around the house. Yeah. He'll grab them and then just, just suck on them. <laughs> Trooper doesn't have anyone to dominate, so he dominates his stuffed animals. Yeah. Which is pretty hilarious because he'll he'll dominate it right in the middle of the front room. When I say dominate, I mean attempt to have sex with it. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> And then, and then he'll just lay down right on top of it and just fall asleep. Just smoke a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> Leaves the cab money out and he's good. He finished. <laughs> he finished first. He didn't actually. He was neutered years ago. So <laughs> that's not happening for him either. That is another thing about Ripley. He has a very small peanut. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very tiny. <laughs> it's just like a little tuft of hair. Does he, does he, do you feel like he's judged by the other dogs? I try to not bring it up, <laughs> but I know Bean says something because she's yeah. tall and fair right. faucet. Yeah, that's uh, there's nothing really you can do for him except just to remind him that he has a lot of other value. Yeah, know? I don't, I, I really don't even bring it up. He pees, um, you know, like a girl squatting. Yeah, he squats. It's more comfortable that way. Are sure. You? Yeah. Well, and he's not getting all over the seat. Exactly. So. <laughs> Did you ever get humped by a dog? Um, Woody. Woody. <laughs> yeah, ironically, right? But yeah, he, which was bad because he was, he was a pretty big dog. Yeah. So he was tall enough that he, he could put his paws on my shoulder. Oh, yeah. And then try and hump. And I mean, it never, I would just push him off and go away. And then that was the end of it. I had a, a, a dog me too moment as well. <laughs> I was doing, um, like dog sitting. Yeah. Going and checking on dogs while the owners were out, were out of town. And there was a, uh, it was a lab and a German shepherd and I was feeding them and they kind of warned me, like, don't like, don't get on the ground mm -hmm. around them because like, they'll like, they may hurt you or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I leaned over to feed one of the dogs and the German shepherd like popped up and put his hands like on my shoulders. Oh, wow. And I was like, ah, yeah, yeah, it's. Yeah, it. I I hated it, and the thing when Woody would get that way, so he would do whenever he was playing Oz, the prison show with Blue, like I referenced <laughs> earlier. For those of you who know what are familiar with Oz, Woody was at a BC. So a little <laughs> deep dive for you there with those Oz heads. Um, <laughs> They're still out there. Yeah, I'm one. Um, <laughs> that show takes a a hard turn into terrible after the first few seasons. Like mm -hmm. it's it's a solid show, and then. Pretty quickly, it doesn't know what to do except just be like more and more extremely violent. But there's not really a good plot. Anyway, another episode for us. We Oz. need prison reform. Yeah. That's what we learned from it. <laughs> but anyway, when Woody would, would assault Blue or when he would try and hunt me or anything, he would lay his ears down like way flatter than normal. Like yeah. he was trying to like look cute or something. And like, No, those are the fuck me ears. That's what, that's what that's I what mean. CC calls like, them. And like mm -hmm. his eyes would get bigger and like. Yeah, he's just a, I don't animal. like any of it at all. Like, yeah. do not come around me with this face. Like, ugh, just made my skin Did it crawl. make you uncomfortable when you were a kid? Yeah. Like that face? Yeah. So since dogs are like pack animals, yeah. we like, you know, evolved with them. Right. They were like with us. They helped us like get out of the caves, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> and uh, they're like a huge part of like, you know, how we hunted. And uh, it's funny the like little weird things that dogs will do and like... 
like the the fuck me ears. I'll mm. like see the ears pinch down, yes. and I'll be like, I don't want to be around them. <laughs> and I wonder if it's like a primal thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's clear that they have ulterior motives at that. Yeah, point, and I'm not a fan of it. They've at been all. taken over. <laughs> A slave to their desires. Toxic. Doggy Yeah. <laughs> Something. Something. The girl dogs will do it too, though. Yeah. Do you ever take dogs to a dog park? No. So we tried to take Trooper, Trooper to a dog park once, and he... Tripped on his ears? No, he, he's, a, <laughs> he's a beagle, so he has, he has floppy ears, but they're not like bass and hound ears. But anyway, he, he we take him to the dog park, and we're like, this would be great because he can just run around. Because at my mom's house, when he goes out, he goes out on a tie out, and he's not out there for like hours on end or something, but just to go to the bathroom or whatever. But you can't just let him out because he will escape within ten minutes. Whether he climbs something, yeah. whether he digs a hole into the fence, and he's so little that hole isn't very big, mm-hmm. and he's got little digging claws. And uh, but anyway, so we were like, well, this will be perfect because now he can run around and he can be around other dogs, or whatever. No, he just. Walked at a snail's pace, sniffing the ground, and that was it. We were there for, like, 30 minutes, and he never took off and explored. Or I mean, he was exploring, but just the 10 feet in front of us. And I was yeah. like, well, we could achieve this just on a walk. Yeah. Actually, we don't need to come all the way to the park for this, which is dissatisfying. But Do you think that, coupled with his, like, need to escape, do you think he's, like, an Andy Dufresne? <laughs> When he was at the dog park, was he just shaking out dirt from his little uh, yeah. claws? <laughs> yeah. Well, he told me he wanted a small hammer to make chess pieces with. Well, and that that's makes when sense. I became suspicious. That seems like a rational He does like Rita Hayworth films. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I've seen videos online of beagles and stuff trying to escape them in the most ridiculous way. It's like they will... Mm-hmm. They will straight Mission Impossible some shit. Like, yeah. Like the solo free climber guys that are like super extended yeah. arms and legs. Yeah, videos where the dog does that to climb on like four different surfaces to escape. So yeah. I don't think it's it, you know just a trooper problem. I think it's a maybe a breed thing with beagles, from what I understand. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. So have you ever? And I think the answer is no. But have you ever done like uh, like I think it's called like agility training with the dogs? Yes, I did that with Fritz. Well, then f me. There you yeah. go. You have done it. Yeah, I did it with Fritz. He because uh, he was he's a rat terrier. Yeah, type dog, but he's very active, and you had to like keep him very engaged. Um, so I did that for a while until I moved here oh, okay. and gave him up. Gaia, yeah, my friend, one of my good buddies' fiancés. She, uh, I don't know if she does it now with the dog they have, but she used to do agility training with Doberman. Uh huh. And yeah, that was always, I don't know, interesting to me because I didn't even know that was an activity that people yeah could do. I mean, I, I know there's dog shows and stuff, so I know it's done somewhere, but I guess I just thought that was always done in you know. New York City here. So. New York City. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a really good thing to do for your dogs. And I had, if I hadn't have lived in my apartment for, you know, a relatively short time, I walked the dogs all the time whenever I lived there. Yeah. Um, I probably would, would do something like that, but we live on the country now. And so there's, we live next to like a giant field and we right. can literally throw a Frisbee, throw a stick, throw anything. Right. And they just run and they're like super muscular. They're, you know, yeah. they run through the woods. They have a territory that they maintain. It's yeah, a, it's a really good like situation for them. So yeah. they don't have that like, you know, anxiety chewing. They don't. I wish, I wish that there was a better outlet for trooper to to get out in but again like the dog park i don't think it would he wasn't into it yeah well the thing is i think if he was just had consistent access and so maybe if we took him to the dog park you know over and over he again some friends so he got used to it yeah then he might be more apt to run around because again if you just open the front door he gone <laughs> now it is fair that he gone for about 100 yards and then he immediately begins sniffing the immediate area and that's distracted. all he's doing yeah He's not too distracted, though, because if you try and catch him in this moment, he will stand still sniffing until you are within, like, three feet and then bolt. Does he do the little over-the-shoulder? Yes. Not, oh, I hate oh, that I, so much. It infuriates me yeah. beyond. I mean, what can you do? It's a dog. He doesn't mm-hmm. understand. He's just trying to hang out, but tough stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I still think he understands. Yeah. Yeah, I think think he knows the whole deal. Again, humans and dogs have been together for so long that, like, I know that they don't speak English, obviously, but we have some sort of, you know, communication. Yeah. He knows he's being a shithead. I think you're right, because I think that's why he's doing the look over the shoulder, because he's trying. He knows that when I catch him, he's going back home. Yeah. 
And so, so you, to some extent, yes, but I don't know how much forethought is given to it other than in that moment. Yeah. Like when he left the house, I don't know that he was like, I'm going to run away. And then when he gets close, fuck that. I'm running two more feet. No, he's going to think I'm going right. I'm going to go left. Right. Right. Luckily, now he's fat, like I said, so he's not quite he's as slower. nimble as he used to be. <laughs> Does he get winded? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, him running away, the bigger the concern with it isn't really, you know, if we lived in a in the country, or my mom lived in the country, then he would have the... I, I wouldn't worry about it because he's just going to run in the field and he can come back, but she lives in the town, so it's like... And he's tiny, so it's like, mm -hmm. well, yeah, he's going to run out into traffic. Or, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, there are creepy people that do creepy stuff to dogs, so I don't For want sure. him to get captured. You know what I mean? I don't know. So mm -hmm. it's just like, it's not just him being gone as much as it's also just, there's no way to, as smart as he is, I don't believe he has the foresight to understand, if I leave here, I'm forfeiting safety and shelter and yeah. striking out to be homeless. You know? Yeah, again. <laughs> Yes. Well, that's the thing is because we didn't get him as a puppy. Like, I, who knows what his life was like? You know, I mean, it's pretty amazing now. He just has three meals He's a day. Clean. Yeah. Yeah. I give him a bath. <laughs> off the meth. Yeah. Dude, she had him. That lady, the meth lady, had him on a just a metal wire wrapped around his neck. Not even on a collar. Just oh, metal guess. wire around his neck yeah. tied to a telephone pole. I fucking so, hate it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I met him, I was like, you're the cutest dog I've ever seen. This mm -hmm. is insane. Oh, oh, yeah. When I was a little boy, I had this book called, um, oh, man, now I can't remember the name of it, I guess. But what it was about was it was a, a, a little child's book that was about, it, uh, it was the the experience of a little kid going to a dog store to buy a puppy, uh -huh. except it was told from the perspective of the dog. So it's like the dog is choosing his boy. Oh. Now, to be clear, the dog is still at the store. It's not like the there's dog a has store no of children. At all. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's not a store of children. The dog shows up. It's not. <laughs> It's not some man in high castle thing or something, but, um, but anyway, yeah. And, and so I read that book a ton as when I was a little bitty kid and Trooper looked exactly like the dog in that book. Oh, the little floppy it was ears. Destin. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was writ. <laughs> it was. Thank you so much, Crystal, for coming to hang out today and talking with me about dogs. Uh, Anytime. Have a ton of fun. And thank you guys for listening. We're out.